Hi, good afternoon, everybody. I'm checking in here just to make sure I can see comments and everything. I'm trying. Um, looks like I'm not going to be able to. I wish I could. Hold on just a sec. Yeah, I can't get signed in. Um, John's running an errand for me today, and so he has his phone with him, and so I'm not able to see comments, unfortunately. I am still waiting for the ability to do that on this program, and so that's gonna be one of my suggestions, is to be able to see comments, live comments, uh, while I'm on. I just can't do it, <laughs> unfortunately. So today, I'm just going to bring you the project. Today is Thursday. It is February the 25th. And I have been playing around with some Pink Fresh. And I am really excited to bring a card to you today. Uh, we're going to not necessarily duplicate this, but um, we're going to play with the layered uh, bouquet, stamp, and die set. I had this background from a project that I took live and it was a leftover piece that didn't get the second layer of plaid on it. It just has the first layer of plaid. I believe it's the first. Look at it and see it, which one it is. It says that it is stencil. It's kind of hard to see is stencil number one. It is, the, no, is it number two? Can't see. Give me a second. It's stencil number two. So it is the second stencil um, in the diamond plaid. I'm out of stock currently on this. Uh, so that will be coming back to the store in the next few weeks or so, probably, mm, mid-March, later in March. But, um, so I decided that today instead I was gonna play around, or not today, but I decided instead for a background to play around with the Argyle. And uh, I created some backgrounds. And we'll see how this goes. I, I gave myself some options with this Argyle background. And kind of, bright, bold, versus soft and subtle. And I I believe I have that video posted here on my a YouTube channel when I did the background for this. It was the full, I used both stencils on it. And that process, I'll post that video here so that you can refer back to how to layer up these um, something different that I did this time around that I didn't do that time. Last time I did this background, I didn't have pixie spray. So this time I used the pixie spray, and this is in the store. And it was an easier process to follow with some pixie spray on it. Um, I will say it does leave a very slight residue on your paper if you use too much. And it will stay tacky, so you can reapply it several times. So, um, and you might still get a little residue. Um, I still have a, I feel a little bit of residue. This was the first one I did. There's no residue on this, and there's no residue on this one. But this was the first one. It has a little residue, and all I did was I just, after it dried, I knew it was good and dry, I just kind of took this art eraser to it and just kind of went over it to get some of that tacky off of it. And it works just like a charm. So it's just perfectly fine. And it might even still have a little left on it, but it's pretty much gone. I think I've got most of the tacky off of it. And it still maintained its uh, color. It didn't affect the color or anything. So it was, it's pretty easy. Um, 
I liked the option of having the the, um, the tacky on there. It it was a nice option to have. So I can still feel a little bit, but it's not it's not anything major. Anyway, okay. So I wasn't sure which background I was going to go with. I don't know which one I'm going to use, and I might even go with a different type of uh, fold on the card. So I have a couple options or several options here that I'm working with today. So we'll see what we end up with. But I am playing with this uh, layered. Okay. So I'm going to tell you, I absolutely, what I used on for the colors on this is I used, this is in a story. Oops, I've got some of these upside down. Is I used, uh, for the first layer, I used Ballet Slipper. And for the second stamp, I used the Raspberry Bliss. But what I did is I went in with the sparkling rose and I kind of just highlighted it just a little bit and I'll show you what I did there. And these little mini cubes are perfect for that little process that I used to kind of get a third color. Um, so yeah. On the leaves I used, and I'll be using the same colors today, I used the fresh pear and I used the grassy knoll. Interestingly enough, I didn't get my stems lined up properly. <laughs> Imagine that. And I had, I didn't like the way it looked. It was way too off. And I'm gonna show you a tip to avoid that. So um, I went back over it with this Zig, uh, Wink of Stella, that is this uh, glitter green. And I fixed it. I think it looks, it turned out beautiful. It looks perfectly fine and I'm quite happy with it. So um, I used some uh, some of these picket fence sequins on it and yeah, I was pretty happy. This color, this background on this stencil, oh my goodness, isn't that beautiful? I love the saturation that you get with the Distress Oxides. This is worn lipstick, uh, dis Distress Oxide and just pulled together just absolutely beautifully. All right, um, real quickly, I will tell you what I used for, hold on a sec. Oh, so on these stencils, let me go back to these stencils. I used, for this one, I used the Catherine Pooler Catching Rays. I just used a really gentle hand on the lighter color and went a little heavier on the um, X's in the um, Argyle, the, the X part of the Argyle. So that's what I used on this. And for this, I used, I'm going to pop this over here. I used the Juniper Mist. Here it is right here. The Juniper Mist in the Catherine Pooler uh, minis. So um, again, same process. And what I did with this is I just went light, heavy, light, heavy. And then for the, the X's, I went with a heavy hand. Then I took my brush and very lightly went back over it to, to kind of cover up the starkness of the white. Now, something that I learned in this process that's really kind of awesome is that if you take your brush, this isn't the same size brush that I used, but if you take your brush and you ink up your silicone mat, you're actually going to lighten and it's you're not going to get that harsh uh, color solid color all of a sudden and so if you bring your color out onto your mat you're going to get a smoother finish and I learned that in this process so as you can see as I went along it, this was kind of um, the process that I followed for that so it was a little harsh at the beginning and then I got I got a little bit more skilled <laughs> as I went along so this is a good thing to learn in this process and it was a little easier to do this because I learned that. This is Black Soot Distress Ink, just the regular ink, Distress Ink. And so again, same process, light, heavy uh, on the inking. Okay, so there we have it. It was a really uh, cool thing that I learned. I It was something I just, I thought, oh, I wonder if I rub it down onto the mat first, if it'll give me a more of an even color. And sure enough, that's exactly what it did. 
So I have some tips to go through with you today um, that I learned from um, Shannon Pelletier. And uh, I'm going to share some of the tips that she shared with this uh, set along with you. And um, let's get to creating. So, and I think actually Shannon mentioned that she got hers from Jennifer McGuire. Possibly. I think that's what she mentioned in her, one of her videos. So, I am going to leave these sequins out. I might end up using them. And I'm going to leave that pen out. You know, you just never know when you might need it. I don't know if that pen is still sold in stores. Um, I have no clue. But um, it sure was sure was helpful to get rid of all the extra lines. I just kind of blended the stems together. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes messy, bad accidents aren't always bad. They're just accidents, and they turn into beauty regardless. And I love the shimmer and the shine. I don't know if you can see the shimmer and the shine that you get with that. You see that? Ooh, turn it this way, turn it that way. I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, I loved how the card turned out. It turned out beautiful. I'm very happy with it. All right, so let's do our layers. Now I am, I will forever be a little partial to this um, stamp position, the uh, tool. It's from Stampin' Up! and I'm a little spoiled because uh, I do think it's the best one out there. <laughs> so I'm no longer a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, but if you do not have this and you um, have a local Stampin' Up! demonstrator, you probably should get in touch with her and get one of these because I personally believe they're amazing. Okay, so um, but I'm not featuring this today. I'm just featuring the, um, I'm featuring the, um, I'm just gonna make sure that I'm still lined up and I have some fuzz on there, I can see. I'm featuring the layered bouquet from Pink Fresh. All right, so here we go. I think we've got that. What I'm gonna do to see if I actually have everything I just realized I don't have much room to move, and I'm afraid I'm going to mess something up. I, okay, close your eyes because I'm moving the camera back just a little because I don't have enough room. I don't have the room that I need, so I need to just kind of move back slightly. Sorry, folks, if that bugs you. I don't have the, yeah, I gotta, still got to go back slightly. I have room now to open my yes I do okay perfect all right the first thing that I would advise that you do is put a piece of copy paper or something underneath here just to see that you are actually where you need to be because otherwise you're gonna if you're prone to mistakes like me that can happen so what we're gonna use we're gonna use orange um, that's why you saw the backgrounds that you saw. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go with an, an orange or a gray or an, kind of a navy. Um, so we'll see what we end up with. Uh, so this is the, um, it's got peach fuzz, apricot, clementine, and persimmon. And um, yeah, fairy dust collection. I believe that's right. Nope, the pinks are the fairy dust. So sorry. This is the Indian Summer. I have my packages mixed up. I'll have to remember. This, this is Indian Summer. This is the um, Fairy Dust. The pink is Fairy Dust. Orange is Indian Summer. My packages are wrong. <laughs> All right. Note to self. So what I did first is I used the Peach Fuzz. Eh, not Peach Fuzz. Sorry. I, on that one, I use the ballet slipper. So I'm gonna use Peach Fuzz on this one and just get it inked up. And I might have to ink it more than once. I'm used to looking up to see if there are any comments. But let's see if we're in where we need to be. 
Another another little cool thing that I have is I it's so funny the things that you keep from your children when they grow up. I don't know how this got left behind for one of my kids. I used to homeschool, so somehow this got left behind and um I thought, "Oh, this will save me some hard work on my hands." Um So this one is not quite Perfect, but I think it'll work. Every other stamp seems to be lined up the way it should be. Yep. And this one's not perfect, but it'll it'll do. Okay. So it's good enough for what we're about to do. So that is that's what we're gonna do. So I already die cut my piece. It's ready to go. And um use this craft pick to get this out. So I'm gonna get these out really quick. Make a mess. So my first layer is definitely going to be this peach fuzz. Now, tip. Take this out, take your copy paper out, and I have, I have a tip so that your piece doesn't fly around inside of there, take some pixie spray and spray the backside and it will stick down to your surface. Gotta wait a minute or so for it to kind of get on there. But this is really nice. Ugh, I wanna make sure I don't get that on my floor. That'll be fun to clean up. Um, so I have the mat in here. It's the foam mats because we're using photopolymer. I believe the Misty also has the, uh, the foam mat that comes with it as well. Yes, it does. So I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to stick this down in here like so. And now I'm going to give it a good press so that it'll stay. And now we're in there. Woohoo. Okay. So here we go. Peach fuzz. First layer. And I'll probably give it more than one layer. Thanks for joining me if you're out there. I appreciate you stopping by to watch. Didn't get that inked up like I wanted. So we're gonna go in. Huh, wait, just a sec. Let's get that off of there so we don't. There we go. Inking up again. So now you see it doesn't pull up as easily when I pull up my stamp. Sometimes photopolymer will stick to the paper and not come up so easily or will come up too easy. It'll stick to your paper and all that jazz. So I'm gonna go one more time on that peach fuzz, focusing on, yeah, this is the one I maybe am not inking up. I need to go then around a little bit better. Now, I'm not too concerned. Here, see, I'm working too hard. I'm not too concerned. See, it just slides really nicely if you get an eraser, a dry eraser, about the base. And here's why. Because you're gonna see that I am going to take the apricot, and you can actually do it with the actual pat, since these are small, you can actually go around and try to do it yourself, like the um, with the corner of it, and just kind of swipe it a little bit to give it some accent, kind of like so. Or you can actually take a brush, get a little ink on it. I'm just gonna kind of ink it up and kind of brush it. 
around and get up. Brush around. These bigger ones are a little easier to ink up. You can kind of smooth it out if you want. Bring it down here. Smooth it out. And I'm going to take the corner, kind of smooth it out so I don't have harsh lines. And now let's see what we get. I'm looking at it and seeing. So we've got that darker color. Here I am working hard again. Not necessary. So now I have a little accent color on there. I'm going to do it again. This time I'm going to get a good trying to remember where I'm at. Okay, so this one. Yeah, I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to use the brush to smooth. Smoothing it downward. More color at the bottom. And Here we go. Smoothing it downward. Is that too much? I'll put a little more on this one. And a little more on that one too. So, smoothing it out. Okay, let's see what we got. I don't know if you can see. Could you see that I was doing that? Hopefully you can. So that just um, gives us a little more depth of color. And like I said, this is Shannon Pelletier that I learned this from, um, and I really like it. So now I have some I have some lines, and I don't like those lines. So I'm going to stamp it one more time um, um, for this one and that one. Yeah. So if you swipe it, you're less likely to get lines. Is that right? Yeah, there it is. That's the one. And you can even use your finger if you don't if you don't mind getting your fingers inky. You have a little bit more control where it goes too. Okay, yes. A little bit better. And I like that. That's pretty. Maybe a little more there. Let's do a little more there. one a little more. Do a little bit more. One more time. Yay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Now we're going to do this second It's probably best. I don't know. Probably best. Maybe not. Get that wet off of there. Now we're going to go with um, persimmon. This is persimmon. And I have it over here on this side. Turn that. I need a spot to. So this is pretty dark. Um, this will be interesting to see what happens, but I'm looking for that dark color to saturate it. And um, I don't want that on there. That would not be a very happy accident. <laughs> I'm getting my ink off. I got ink in the center of it. Okay. 
<laughs> now we have those sequins stuck to the stamp behind it. Okay, over here, maybe that's a better place to put you. Okay. Ink one more time. Parker. Seems uh, maybe I need to condition my stamps. Yeah, that's right. I had a little bit of a, a moment of like, what? It is correct. That's where it's supposed to go. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes you're like, no, wait, did I not put the, the plate on right? <laughs> Hold on a second. That's pretty. I like that bright color. The only thing is I'm having a hard time getting this on. Let me see. I just need, I want one more time. I'm going to do that. Um, up here is not getting inked up for some reason. And where are you? Which one are you? This one. I think I'm happy with the rest. Okay, one more time. Yeah. Okay. Pretty, very pretty. I like it. Um, might actually come up just a little bit more on that uh, apricot. I think I might come up a little higher. So give me a sec while I just do this again. That one's okay. One little bit more on that one. A little more on that one. So let's get bit more. I just want a little more second color. Or, or Actually, it's more like a third. I just need a little bit more. I wanted to give it that extra added touch in there. Yeah, definitely. And even those little splotches in there kind of still give it a flowered look. I like it. Just gives it some dimension. Okay. I think we're good with that. It's pretty. Now let's go to our stems. Clean that up. I'm just an FYI. I'm a very, I'm not a very fast crafter. I, um, so for those of you who really get on to yourself about being slow, um, don't. I, I think that it's important to enjoy the process and I, I don't know that when you go fast you really can enjoy it as much as you should. So enjoy your crafting. Have fun. Okay so now I'm going to one more now I'm not going to do that. I think I'm still in there and I'm in there good. Okay so we should be okay. I'm going to stick my head probably in the camera see where this is going yes I think yes it's fine okay I can see that it's fine so first I'm gonna ink up these leaves clean off the orange that I had on here I'm gonna try to attempt to use I might need a bigger brush maybe that's the issue just not getting enough ink on it because it's not very big okay so first we're going to go with the fresh pear. We're going to ink this up, put this down, get the leaves in there. Pretty, very pretty, very pretty color. I'm going to go again. Probably should grab something to stick under, under 
underneath there to get it a solid surface. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to try something. I'm going to give it one more stamp, but I am going to try something with that grassy knoll. I'm going to try a real soft highlight of the grassy knoll at the base of each of these leaves. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we can get some. Oh, yeah, that's, I'm liking that. Okay. Let's try that. And you can see that I'm over here. Yes, okay. So I'm gonna take the grassy knoll and I might just do it with my fingers. Make sure I'm clean. I'll get another baby wipe. Making sure I'm clean. And yeah, let's just do it with the fingers. I'm gonna take my finger, get some down here. Yep. I'm gonna go here, here. Here. So I think this is going to give it a little softer look. It might be a little beaded, but I'm going to try this. See how that turns out. So let's give that a stamp. Give it a little more color. Here much, how much I work. <laughs> work too hard. I'm liking it a lot. I like that a lot. It needs more. <laughs> okay. I tried it to do another layer at the base with the fresh pear, and it just it didn't seem like it really gave it enough extra color. So that's why I thought, so when I do this live, I'm going to try it with the grassy knoll and I'm going to see how that comes out. Okay. Yes. Beautiful. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. One leaf needs a little, it needs a little help. I Maybe mean, I didn't get it at all, it looks like. I see you, little leafy. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. It's what I wanted. Exactly what I wanted. Now, now we're going to ink up these stems and get this puppy out and pop it on a card. So this was the part that tripped me up really bad last time. So I'm holding my breath slightly. <laughs> and I'm going to take this off because I don't need it. We're okay. Nope, we're not. Not everywhere. Isn't that weird? In some places we're good and others we're not. But we're just going to ink it up again and go with it. Looks like right there it's not. Who knows? I just didn't turn it right or something. These things, these stamps sometimes can, you just got to adjust them right. But to me it's not a big deal. Let's see. It's really, it's actually not the worst I've ever seen. So I'm not going to be unhappy with it whatsoever. One more time. Give it that extra color inside the leaves. Just making sure. Get that good and inked up. Okay. 
Yes, I'm very happy with that. Okay, before I get my elbows and everything, get my hands good and clean. And when you're wearing black, it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I'm a sign language interpreter and I wear lots of black. So you're probably gonna see me wearing lots of black. That's what my wardrobe consists of mostly is lots of black clothes. Um, does help when you spill the coffee and whatnot. So I'm really liking how that turned out. It's really pretty. It was just this right here that didn't quite, um, maybe a little bit of that, but it's not, to me, it's not a big deal. It's just a matter of the the stamp probably needed to be adjusted slightly. But I'm very, very happy with that. Okay. So, let's see. Did I throw my wipe away and I didn't clean off that stamp? I'm going to put all those stamps on the same... Same one, and then I can pull this one out. There we go. Now we can close that up. There. Stick this over here. All right. Let's make a card. I'm excited about this part because I wasn't quite sure uh, uh, how that was going to turn out. So again, those colors that I used were Peach Fuzz for the basic base of it, and then Accenting with Apricot and the um, second stamp was with Persimmon. Okay. Grassy Knoll and Fresh Bear all in the store. I'll post and link everything later. Now let's take a look at our bases. See what we have here. Gray. I really wish I could see comments because I'd really love your feedback on this. This ought to be interesting. I thought this would be the one I would go with. I'm a little partial to it actually. This was the first background I made. And I'm definitely saying no to this. Okay. So this to me screams, you know, like Happy Mother's Day, um, Happy Easter, um, or even a, a cheerful get well card. Um, I really like that background with it. This one potentially could have a, possibly even a sympathy. Um, I'm really thinking no on that. looking at it in the camera at a distance too. I don't know. I'm feeling cheerful. I like the cheerful. I really do. So, so now here's the next thing. I was thinking that this would be really cool to have on panels as a as a card that was um, called trifle. And do I want it on a regular card? Um, so I would have to cut this down to make it work, but I'm thinking, let's do it. Let's go for it. Let's give it a try um, to see how it works. So follow me here. Come on this journey with me. <laughs> so, the next thing, I guess, let's just do that first. Let's just go with that. So I'm gonna cut this down. I'm actually gonna cut this down to um, measure. Where are my notes here? I'm gonna cut to one and seven eighths by five and a quarter. So each panel needs to be one and seven eighths 
and it's already cut down to a five and a quarter. So all I need to do is just cut the panel so that it would be like this on the panel, if that makes any sense. And then this will be adhered to just one side of it so that it can open. Okay, we'll see how this goes, how this rolls. Um, I do want that to, to match on the edges of the outside of the card. So seven, eight. Oh, I did it wrong. So maybe this will go to the inside. Yep, that's what I'll do. Yep, yep. That's okay. Whoopsie daisy. Happens. Sorry, I'm not showing you what I'm doing here. Okay, so we're going to adhere this. And it's going to go on the, on the center of this. And it's going to open at, like such. Okay. Pretty. I was thinking that that white in the center if um, would kind of maybe soften it up a little. So let's glue these on. Um, Giving my shameless plug for Barely Art Glue. Buy the glue. It's the best glue ever. Not, not kidding. I wouldn't tell you that if I didn't believe it. Um, my customers that are here for classes would tell you, I need to start doing testimonials. I need my customers to give you some testimonials about this glue. It's the best. There's nothing like it. Okay, making sure. Yeah, okay. I've had adhesive issues forever. Like, seriously. Forever. hands are dirty and it's now sticking to it. <laughs> um, this has solved all of my adhesive problems with liquid glue. I love that you can get a thin application and it comes with a different tip. It also comes with a lid that you can use to close it up if you're going to transport it. It's wonderful. Okay. Now, let me tell you how I got this. Is it gatefold? Is it a gatefold? That's gatefold. I get my fold. These folds, the names of different folds, I get them all messed up. I just did this on the fly, folks. I decided right like 15 minutes before I jumped on here that I was going to do the fold, a different kind of fold. Okay, so what I did was I took um, a piece of cardstock, 8 half by 11, I cut it halfway at the five and a half um, mark and then um, I then I turned it and I scored it at two and an eighth and then I flipped it over and scored it at two and an eighth to get this fold. It's pretty simple. All right. Let's put this on here. Okay. So when it opens, it will open like such. And where did I have, oh, here it is. So I am giving you another craft tip today. And I, I think I've mentioned this before, I know I've mentioned this before, that craft foam is really nice for uh, dimension on your cards. And craft foam is especially nice when you have a shape like such and you don't want to have to use a ton of uh, double-sided foam adhesive. Keep cutting and tearing and whatnot. What a pain in the butt. So this kind of eases that a bit. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take all my hair. My hair is good grief. If it's not the cats, it's me. <laughs> Hairy old lion. Um, so I'm putting, I'm, I'm really getting this good and saturated with some glue and so that it will stick and it will. 
because as you can see, my other card was holding up just fine, the one I showed you at the beginning. And I am going to stick something really heavy on this. That way, and give it some time to, to dry. But how wonderful is this? I should have already done this. this had that working on while we were working on the, uh, well, you live and you learn. It's not a big deal. It'll be ready to go by the time we're ready to use it. Um, so here we are. I don't forgot what I was saying. It's a story of my life. What was I saying? <laughs> um, dimension. Yes. So the, the, the craft foam gives you an alternative to, um, to dimension. So it's nice. It's a real nice alternative. I'm just moving it where it needs to go to sit on there. And once I have everything where I want it, going to place something heavy on there. Cut this block. I'm going to set this block on it. I'm actually going to set the sidekick on it too. So it will dry. Stick down in there. All right. Now, we have a decision to make. So I have these really cool letters that are, have just been added to the store. And these are Sizzix by Tim Holtz. These are so cool. Um, what did I do? Here it is. Okay, so I thought it would be cute to have the word hi <laughs> on there. Um, I think I want it on the front and um, I, I, you could put, I put, you are so wonderful on the other one. You could do, um, but I thought you've been on my mind is, uh, is you can still do a cheerful, um, a cheerful, that could be a cheerful, like I'm thinking about you. Um, if a person's been sick, you've been on my mind. Uh, I think that would work. You could do high on the outside, or you could even just pop it open and say, hi. <laughs> so I don't know. That's the decision that we have to make here. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it in orange or if I wanted to do it in black. And I, um, let's get this off here and see got going here. Let's see if we've if we're on there pretty good. Looks like we are. Okay. So let's lay this down. You could cut it out of both colors. I don't know about sorry. I don't know about that. Hmm. I don't know that I like the I think I might want the dark, the black letters because I I've got a piece of um, or maybe just on the inside, maybe nothing on the outside. I don't know. To me, it needs something. Maybe I don't want to do that. <laughs> it was, it was the plan. The plan was to use it and to use it on the outside. Yeah. Hmm. I'm thinking the wheels are turning. That. Let's cut out both colors and see what we get. That's what I'm going to do. Let's stick that back on there. Oh, and by the way, this is the exclamation point. I decided to get creative and um, maybe I won't use that sentiment. I don't know. 
Let's see. Maybe I'll just stamp on it. Who knows? I wanted to do something different. Boy, I wish I could see your comments. I wish I could see if you're on here with me. I got to there's, there's got to be a solution to this. My husband's not always going to be here when I do this. So I got to figure this out. Hey, just getting on here alone, figuring out how to cast my station and be able to be on here with the double screen. That was an accomplishment in and of itself. I'm a crazy crafter. I go everywhere. All right. Where did my circle go? There it is. It's hard to see. I'm kind of feeling like I will end up with black. It's kind of what I initially felt like. leave that dot off. It's going to be a nemesis for a while. Let's see. Let's see. Let's bring it over here. So now that we have that, I don't know that it really is the look that I'm wanting, to be honest with you. Um, I'm thinking that I might end up just um, stamping directly on there. I kind of like that look. I just think that this isn't really what I'm wanting. Um, although the vellum is pretty, uh, it's just not, it's not what, it's not the look I, I'm looking for. Um, at least not on this card. Some of you might like it. But I am definitely looking at stamping right here. So I'm gonna move this stem. And I'm gonna find a sentiment here. Um, so I like, so live life in full bloom. Um, this could end up be, this could be a graduation card. This could be a um, retirement card. Um, yeah, it could be any of those things. And so I wanted something that, that was um, a little big, but not huge. So I'm, I think I'm gonna go with that. Live life in full bloom. right here. Yeah. Um, although this this may seem like a sentiment that is more like something that you would see for, I'm going to set this here to keep it down. Um, I thought I had a smaller block, but I guess it might be something that you would see more like in journaling or in scrapbooking. Um, I think it's a sentiment that would work for a life event, um, like a happy life event. So definitely retirement and graduation are happy life events. So bring that 
is that about right? Pretty. So now in order to keep this from, so you're going to only adhere it on one side. And so there is a little trick to this. I'm trying to remember the little trick to it though. <laughs> And it, okay, yep, there is a trick. So what I want to do is I want to lift up and kind of mark where I want, I don't want my glue to come past, if that makes sense at all. So that's going to have to come about like that. So I see it on here. Yep, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'm kind of marking it on here where the glue should not go past. So now I'm pulling it off and I want to glue everything below. That's how I do it. Above, I said below, but I meant above, nothing above. And we're gonna Yep, we're just gonna stick it on there. That's what we're gonna do. Dive and pray for the best. Yep. It worked. Whew. Commit, right? So as it um, as the glue goes down, whoop, making sure there's not any glue there, I am going to <laughs> make a mess. <laughs> Set this on. It did move slightly. But I think it should be fine. Set that on there so that it stays. And now I'm gonna be looking at what kind of gems I wanna put on there. Let's see. We'll see how some of these work. Um, I do like, I like, to, I like the bright ones from this. The, I'm gonna look at these also, the picket fence. And maybe this time I won't draw a Spill them everywhere, but um, perhaps maybe these are soft. These are very soft and springy. Um, they even have butterflies in them, so that'd be pretty. Oh, and there's some clear iridescent. I don't know about the butterflies. We'll pull. There's a couple stuck together, so we can just. We'll see how that goes too. Let's pull some of these out. Yeah, that yellow would work. So does that orange. It's very soft. Okay, I think we got enough. If we need more, we'll grab them. Okay. And there we are. Very pretty. Oops. I didn't smear that. See, look at this. Potential disaster. <laughs> if there is a potential disaster, it's waiting for me. <laughs> so, well, that was a chance to feature those cool, uh, cool dies. I just think that the it wasn't really what I was anticipating. Although, hello would have been really pretty if I'd stamped it on that vellum. That would have been really pretty and soft, but uh, elegant. Anyway. Okay. So there's that. Looking good. Looking good. Very pretty.
and I like it a lot. It has a, a wow factor to it. We do need to get that out. Actually, this would do. There's some, there's like a big glob of glue. Even though this, eh, I'm just going to let it dry clear. It'll be fine. All right, so let's start putting these on here and see how we like that. Pretty. Let's see those colors. Grab it. on that. Let go, whatever you are. It's not fluttering. Hmm. No. Not sure about the butterfly. It's still not. Yellow. We're all in yellow. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of like thinking. That's why I'm not talking. Sorry, I'm so quiet. Sometimes I get quiet when I craft. I think I've told you that before. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with all same colors. Yeah, let's do that. That's pretty. I like that. Okay, so where did my block go? Here it is. I'm gonna keep this down. So that we don't have them everywhere. And I am going to put my, um, my sequins on with glue dots. We're gonna do that. Yay. Just a quick. I like these because they're they're noticeable, but they're soft. They don't overpower the card. So that's kind of why I went with this color. I, I do like it. It kind of picks up a little bit of the orange and the yellow. It's it works for me. Um, I really like it. Very pretty. Okay. That is our card. I don't know if you can see. Ooh, I always. That's our card. It's very, it turned out really pretty. I like it a lot. Okay. Ta da! And the inside. Not really sure. Um,. You could use um, Live Life in Full Bloom, and then you could say take time to smell the flowers. So that would be a really nice um, sentiment that you could pop on the inside for somebody who is um, retiring.
Yeah, I like that. Live life in full bloom. Take time to smell the flowers. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to do that really quick. I know I'm running a little long. That's okay. Um, if there's anything I've learned, sometimes we need to take time to stamp. Um, I like that. If I don't do it now, it might not. just might not happen. So let's just do it now. Take time to smell the flowers. We're going to do it. Give me a second. I'm going to go find a smaller block, though. Oh. Getting old. All this hot and cold weather. Does a number, and especially if you're sitting for a long time in one spot, it's just. Whew. All right. And there we have it. So it's two step stamping here. Move stuff out of my way. And usually, when I'm done, I have a huge mess. just how I roll. Okay, take time to smell the flowers. And you know, it would be really nice if um, so what, what could happen here, and then I have to close that so that dries, but what could happen here is you stamp another bloom, which would be really nice. You could stamp a whole nother bloom and um, cut some of the smaller pieces with the leaves, just kind of fussy cut them out and kind of lay that right underneath this sentiment. That would be really pretty. So, and I think I might do that. So I'll post a picture after it's done and show you what it looks like. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful, blessed day, and we are headed into the weekend. Enjoy it, and um, remember to take time to smell the flowers. Even though they're not blooming outside, um, maybe the metaphor of take time to enjoy life, take time to enjoy one another. Have a good day. Bye-bye.